day, guess the end. Dog on the fishing the edge. Can do a bit of beach fishing. Talk about beach structure. The best time to do that is on the low tide, which is what I've got now. It's a little bit hot to be out here, but uh, that's the best time to find all those gathers and holes. And they're the areas where we really want to fish. I'm, I'm treating a little bit at the moment. One thing is we've got the 2010 BRP here. Great bike, power steering's just eating the sand up, so that's making it easy. But the other thing I'm treating with is, uh, is I've got the Lorance handheld GPS. So I've just pulled up here now. There's a big hole. There's gutters leading in from one side. Sandbank at that end, gutter. Sandbank at this end, gutter. And they're feeding back out into a hole. As that tide comes in, this hole's going to get deeper. You've got a chance of jewfish, big tailor, whiting, big brim, flathead, all those sorts of things. We're going to certainly try and get a few whiting this afternoon and a few brim on the live worms. A simple matter of bang, bang, lock that waypoint in, go down the beach, pick a few other holes. If this one doesn't work, we'll soon go and fish another one. species we've already spoken about, brim whiting, flathead, jewfish, tailor salmon. It's just a great part of the world to be in anywhere around Australia where you're going to fish on the beach. If you don't know, it's only a little whiting. That gives you some confidence that you're in the right area. It's a beautiful little fish, not big enough by any means for us to take, but a nice little yellow fin whiting. Hopefully I'm in the right area and he's got some bigger friends there. Let's get him back and get another cast in. That's a great son. He's got to use that wave. Just use that last wave. Pull that fish up. There's the result. Beautiful sand whiting. I'll just clean, the clean a bit of that sand off him. So we can see what he looks like. Look at this is not this is not rocket science by any means. You want to grab the kids and, and get down the beach, bring the dog down. I've done it pretty easily here today with the using the quad bike, using my GPS, marking these gutters. As the light changes, you can certainly uh, pick up some quality fish. That's a beautiful beach whiting. See the difference between the estuary fish? We've got those super bright yellow fins, anal fin there and those pectoral fins, and any fish that comes off the beach is always, just always seems to be in such great condition. They've got to fight hard. There's a lot of surge happening. They're always very fit. And, uh, and certainly one like this for the table, very, very tasty as well. So once again, just keep working on that structure. Think about it as a pretty lifeless place and look for those surgy areas, those banks and those holes and fish those. And, and this is the sort of catch you might get. fish on the beach because there's so much action just come in and smash your bait. Sometimes you just got to drop that rod tip, let it take it, and then send the hook. Got have another small wider here. I think got a heavier sinker on this one. You can hardly pull a bite sometimes. And the thing is I'm fishing with on a filament line on one rod and then the other rod I've got some PE or polyethylene or braid or or uh, whatever you want to call it, on the other line, and there's not a lot of stretch. There's another nice, beautiful beach whiting. He swallowed that down. Luckily, he's a legal fish, and I can either trim him off and let him go, or I can keep that fish for, for a bit of supper. But uh, yeah, and, and with that monofilament line, it works like a rubber band. You get a lot of stretch in it. You can feel the bites a lot better with that light braid line, and it's because it's so fine. Um, that's eight pound braid on that rod. This is an eight pound nylon. That one's about a third the thickness. 
third the diameter. So when the waves break and the wind blows, it's it's a third less, it's two-thirds less likely to be affected by, by those situations, by wind and tide and everything else and waves. So what that means is that you've got a more direct line to your bait and you can feel the bites. talking about 10, 15 kilo, 2 kilo fish. We're just talking about bread and butter fishing. Anybody can go and do it. You can just park your car behind the sand dunes, walk down here, get yourself some beautiful whiting like that, brim. If you've got the bigger gear there, some jewfish. As I said, 4 pound litre. If the brim come in, you want to go up to maybe 8 pound. Remember, it's sand and there's really nothing here that's, that's going to, uh, no fish that's going to dust you on any roof or anything. Certainly in this beach, plain sand beach. Beach, so these great big long rods, there's a reason for it. You've got to try and get past that break if you can, that's a nice one. You know? Just want to get past that break, the shorter your rod, this fish in close, can we talk to you? That's a nice fish. There we go, beautiful whiting. But those shorter rods just don't allow you to cast out and hold your line up above that break. So if you've got that break dumping on your line, all it's doing is dragging your bait back into the beach. It's going to get rolled over and tanked up. So longer rods definitely are the go. You can buy some pretty cheap two-piece beach rods. This is some old one-piece ones. I've had them for probably 20 years. I don't do that much beach fishing anymore, but they're always there to use. And get me a few quality fish like that. 